In today's video, I'm going to show you how to disassemble your CV joints, inspect and rebuild them, then we're going to put them on brand new OEM Volkswagen CV joint boots. We're going to talk about what clocking is for CV joints and why you should do it. Let's get started. Okay, see if you can see this. This is um, a Rockford boot we put on about four or five years ago. It's got maybe 40,000 miles and there we are. we've developed a rip and grease is starting to come out. So if this one's ripped, the rest probably aren't far behind. So we're going to replace all four of these today. You can also see on the inside, the transmission side of that same joint, it's been throwing grease. So there must be a leak in this one as well too. It's all over the starter and the shifter back there. So. I believe it's coming from between the boot and uh, the metal flange, which on these Rockford boots is clamped on, which I'm not a big fan of. Here are the tools and items you're going to need to change your CV joints. You're going to want a good box of gloves because this is a messy, messy job. You may need some snap ring pliers to get the circlip off the end of the CV joint, though you could probably use a flat blade screwdriver as well. You need an extension to get to the bolts on the wheel side. A ratchet you're going to need a triple square bit this is not a torx bit this is a triple square i have one that i put in a uh, looks like an old e12 socket that i had laying around i've had this bit for probably 30 years when i used to work on my schrockos and gti's back when i was in high school so um, get a good one that lasts a long long time don't skimp on this because you don't want rounded rounded off bolts especially on the wheel side they're a bear to get out you may need a puller of some sort. If your race on your splines is tight and you can't get it off, you can pound them off, but that's just not good for anything. These are pretty cheap to buy. Again, lots of rags because this is a messy job. Of course, you need your CV boots and you need some grease. So let's take a look at what these look like. Again, these are Volkswagen OEM CV boots that are off a of Tiguan. And I'll put a link in the description of where I got these from and the part numbers. And my first impressions on these is I like the fact that the boot is bonded to the flange. As you saw before, I have had problems with the grease coming out from there. The material's a, a bit stiffer and more plasticky than I thought it might be. Uh, they're not as soft and pliable as the Rockford boots, but maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. Um, these are, again, OEM made in Germany boots. And they come with clamp for the axle side, um, a new circlip, and what's a really nice item is this gasket that goes between the flange and the CV joint to keep the grease you saw kind of coming out. And of course with it you'll need CV joint grease. Uh, we went Febe, uh, made in Germany again. This is excellent grease, we've always used it and had no problems with it at all. As we start on here, what I'm going to do is take our triple square, put it in, kind of work it around that boot a little bit, push it, but then take a hammer and give it a few taps to so feel it bottom out. That way you know it's fully inserted and you're not going to have any slippage with it. So loosen all of your bolts up first, we'll take them out, we'll drop this down, and we'll do the wheel side. Now that bolts are out, you have to give it a couple taps with the screwdriver in that groove to kind of get it unseat sometimes. There we go. Now this side is done, we'll do the wheel side. We now have our extension onto our triple square. Reach in there and you can see the upper bolts and kind of start them again. So, a few taps until it bottoms out.
to be up or too loose. You're gonna need to lift the CV joint up and get to the lower ones. Could have to push the boot up out of the way to find those. There we go. Right. There. So we clamped the CV joint in our vise. We're gonna remove a lot of this excess grease, pull these bolts out so we don't lose them, take the circlip out, and that will allow us to get the um, CV joint off the shaft. See inside all that grease there, right there is a, it's a circlip that we have to remove. Finally, so the joint is now loose from the flange and it should come off the axle. But see ours is stuck on there. And what you don't want to do is hit the outer cage because what's going to happen is the impact is going to go through the balls inside this cage and you could damage that. So what we're going to do is we're going to disassemble the CV joint and then we're going to take this off with the puller. In order to take the outer cage off, all you really need to do is, is push it out and you see the balls will start to drop out. Do it on a something, we, we need an old towel here so the balls don't roll off. You definitely don't want to lose them. As you rotate the CV joint around, the balls will come out. Once the balls are out, the outer race comes out. We'll put this back in the vise and we'll use the puller on the outside of this to uh, remove this cage, or the inner race, I'm sorry. So we have our puller set up, that needs a little socket as a spacer because it won't be enough throw to get it off. See our cage is loose, there's no pressure on it at all. I'm going to use the impact to zip this thing off. There we go. Our inner race is off, no damage to, there it goes, no damage to any parts now. And we can start with cleaning it up, putting it back together. Now that we have the pieces disassembled, they're clean and inspected, kind of go over some of the little details in a CV joint that may not be apparent at first, but are super important. First, you'll notice this is a stock style low bro joint. It has one groove on this side. This groove on the axle goes out towards the transmission or the wheel. It does not go on the shaft side. I've seen some joints with a line here, a groove here, and three grooves over here. I, I don't know why those are. Those are mostly the empties that I've seen. If that's the case, I typically just keep the one groove on the outside like the stock one. Also, you'll notice there's a pattern in here. There's a wide, narrow, wide, narrow, wide, narrow. That's super important for assembly. On this inner race, you'll see the same kind of pattern, a wide, wide, narrow, wide, narrow. And what we need to do when we assemble these is we need to stagger the, the, the pattern. We need to have the narrow on the inside line up to a wide on the outside and vice versa. If you were to line up, <clears throat> excuse me, wide and wide, you can assemble the joint. It will go together, but you'll have no articulation. It will be bound up and locked up. When you go to try and install it, you, it won't work. So make sure those are the, the right way. On these inner races, I've seen a few different kinds. So this one has flat on both sides. Uh, it doesn't have a lip. Some have a little step on one side and some don't. I don't know why, just different brands. Again, this is a low bro joint. So it has you know, a small chamfer on either side. This one's basically interchangeable how you put it on the axle. On the cage, there's a very subtle difference between each side. They're, they're symmetrical, the, the grooves are lined up right in the middle. But on this side, this has a small chamfer on the inside of this cage where this side does not. So that small chamfer needs to be in the right direction of the CV joint. That needs to be at going towards the axle side. So during articulation, that doesn't interfere or hit anything. Now for assembly. Groove facing away from the axle. Remember we have the cage with the one side with a chamfer on it. That goes inside, so we'll put the groove facing up so the chamfer goes in, 
On this piece, it is smooth on both sides, so it's interchangeable. And we're going to drop those in. So, remember, we got to line up. We've got a narrow and a narrow. That's not correct. So, we got to spin this over a narrow and a wide, a wide and a narrow. So, from here, we line the cage holes up with the uh, grooves. Pick this up. We drop a ball in. You just kind of go around by tilting that cage up. I'm sorry, the inner race up and dropping in one ball by holding the inner race from falling out. Sometimes the last one can be kind of a bear, but this is an older joint, so it's probably a little bit loose. So there you go. We're going to got wide and narrow, narrow and wide. We have the groove facing away from the axle and the inside we have the chamfer. So this is one completed joint ready to be pressed on. So we put a fresh coat of paint on the shaft to keep it from rusting. Looks nice. First thing you want to do is slide your boot over the shaft. I won't tell you how many times I've put the CV joint on only to realize I forgot to slide the boots on. That's a bit frustrating, so put those on first. Push them all the way down to where you see the, uh, there's kind of these ribs on the shaft that will keep the boot in place. I usually slide them a little further to leave the room to work. Notice I also put the clamps on the boots now. They're just loose. That way we don't have to open them up. Uh, they'll just stay on there for now. And since our CV joints, we had to, we had to take the uh, puller to get them off, we're gonna need to push these back on. So we'll just kind of start them here a little bit and then we'll need to take them over to the, to the uh, vise clamp it up, and then tap this into place. So now we have the CV joint on. We're going to gently tap just on the inner race. We don't want to tap anywhere else, just on the inner race. And once we get it flush, we use a socket that's, the ID is larger than the axle. We'll drop it until we just have that uh, part exposed for the circlip. Right, now we'll put our circlip on. Give it a little tap to make sure that it's seated on both sides. There we go. When people say clocking the CV joints, referring to as lining up the sides to be opposite, kind of like we did the inside here, we have a wide and a narrow. When we put this side on, we're gonna put a narrow to match up with the wide. So the wide on top, we'll put a narrow on top. That'll give us the most amount of articulation and the least amount of binding. So we'll go line up the splines and then we'll press it on. So there you go, we can see with a narrow on top, on this side, we have a wide on top. Everyone's favorite part, putting the grease in. So we've got this grease, we cut the, just the corner off the part here, kind of like a pastry thing. We're going to squeeze it in. Now we we'll probably won't use this whole tube. We'll see this, up, this tube's quite a bit bigger than ones I've seen in the past. The goal is to get it into all of these little crevices. And all this, we don't need to fill this whole boot up. That would be a bit overkill. So we're just going to start squeezing it in, kind of working it in, kind of pushing, trying to fill all those holes up. Kind of like packing a bearing a little bit. Kind of move the joint in and out and push that grease in there. Try to keep it out of the holes for the bolts. We'll clean those out later because we don't want any grease in the threads as we put them in. Let me get some back here. We'll push our boot a little further back. You probably used half this tube so far already. We might use the, use the whole thing here. Work that into your finger, just get in all those spots you can. And work it in and out a little bit and let it fill in. 
as it kind of oozes out the front, you can kind of wipe it and put it in the back a little bit. So this part's all packed full of grease. We got the back all packed. We'd use just a little bit less than that tube. Now we're going to clean all the holes out, make sure as we push the bolts through, we don't get any grease through them. So we'll do that next, and then we'll repeat for the other side. Our bolts are cleaned up. Each bolt has a serrated washer on it, which is very important. Make sure those are on there. And all of our pieces are ready to be put back on. There we go. Two fully rebuilt CV joints. Look how nice those look. Almost too pretty to put on the van and get all dirty, but that's what they're for. Let's get them installed. All done and installed. I'm hoping we get more miles out of these boots. Though I'm not as confident as I was when I first put them on. You see the bellows are touching each other. Now we do have about an inch or so lift on this and it's probably not helping that. But we'll see if those bellows rub together and how they hold up compared to the Rockfords. Well there you have it. Not a really hard project. Super messy. But we needed to get this done. That boot was torn. It was just going to get worse. We've got a lot of really big trips coming up in 22. We want to make sure we got this done. So if you have any questions or comments, drop them down below, and I'll see if we can get those addressed for you. Thanks a lot.